Question of the day, what is your favorite dice placement game? That's a pretty direct genre because it's not just worker placement, it's not just a dice game, dice placement. So things like um, Grand Austria Hotel or Kingsburg. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite dice placement game is because today, we're talking about a game all about the Crystal Palace. No, not the restaurant in Magic Kingdom, but what that's based on. The original World's Fair and rushing to be the best to get the most fame to show off that you are the bee's knees, as they would have said about 100 years after that. Point is, you are trying to compete using dice placement to be the best at inventing stuff and getting patents and promoting your patents. So let's take a look right now at Crystal Palace and Capstone Games. So here we go with Crystal Palace set up for two players. You'll start with 40 pounds each. You'll get your assistants that are out here. One sits on your player board, which I'll show you down here. Uh, you'll pick one of the different countries, and then your assistant, like I said, goes there. You'll also have a marker that marks your newspapers. Newspapers are a currency that you use that are not physically kept. They're kept with a track on the board. You'll start with four dice two of which are reserved over here that you can get later. Now there's another sideboard over there which tracks main points and things like that, as well as this kind of Candyland looking track here in which you're talking about the buzz of your product. The higher you move up that, the more benefits you get. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the main area of the game is made up of dice placement. Now, it is not a roll your dice and place them. It is a choose what numbers you wanna use. The caveat is what numbers you choose is the cost you have to pay that turn. So this, for instance, is 14, 16. That would cost me $16 to play this. However, the person who has the highest number spent is the person who places their dice first. Now, on each of these spaces, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dice placement areas. The black market is something else, but we'll talk about that in a second. There are different things about it. Notice you're going to put the dice first and then take the action. So three people could place the dice here, but depending on the order in which you resolve your dice, only two action slots are available which is kind of tricky because it means you might not get to use the very place you set up to use. Now, it's, a, it's rare. It doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. You can get shut out of a place if you choose to play that dice in a bad order. For instance, Bank of England up there, two dice placement slots, one space. The person who puts the highest number out there is the one who gets to place their dice first. So notice up there, it is a four and a one. The four will get to place and take the action first. So, so if you go there with a one, the person who places the four there is going to go there first. So it's a gamble. You can place the one there and hope no one places a four, but odds are they may just do that because that space is pretty good. And we'll go through all the spaces here in a moment, but just know that's the majority of the game is you're going to be placing the dice and then they'll resolve in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight order, left to right, higher number to lower number, which means there's a benefit to playing those higher numbers, of course. Now, obviously, the benefit to playing lower numbers is the fact that you don't pay as much for them, but the downside is, just know, you might get put out of a spot, which is always a problem. One other thing, there are two types of currency here. You've got imagination and invention, I believe. I don't remember what they're called. It's light bulbs and cogs. That's the most important part, and those are used for the two different types of cards. You have the people cards here, and then you have the patent cards there, and there's a whole bunch, and these cards are absolutely gorgeous. They have historical and semi-historical figures on them. Let's see if it'll click here. So... The Rothschild, Paxton, Pizarro, Phileas Fogg, uh, Sherlock Holmes, obviously not a real character, but some of these, many of these are uh, from the historical area, era of the time. Queen Victoria, uh, Bellicini, William Armstrong. Do we get any magicians in here? Come on. I'm going to be disappointed if there's no magicians. Well, I'm just absolutely disappointed. Anyway, point being, you got all these characters, and then you have the patents for the different things. This is the actual Crystal Palace, not the restaurant in Magic Kingdom. You have all these different sorts of items here that you can make uh, Faraday Cage. Some more real than others. Anyway, point being, you are trying to make these cards uh, early enough, or take them early enough to where you get the more points for them, or late enough, depending on what it is. For instance, Crystal Palace rewards you for playing it later in the game versus... Rothschild here rewards you for getting him earlier in the game. The main difference is when you take a patent up in the top left, you sit it to the side of your player board. You don't actually spend this until this phase, which happens on phase five, which you'll see down here. So there's pick your dice numbers, place them, take the actions, pay your people. That would be these people. Their salaries listed in the bottom there. Then you do patents. You can convert up to two of the blue patents in a round. Then you take income and 
drop your income we'll talk about in a minute then the black market shifts and changes and stuff and then you go back to the main game here the cost associated with the patents and the characters is in the top left now when you do a character you got to pay for that immediately so this would be one light bulb to get used to them the difference is though some of the patents key off of some of the different characters so the thinking machine would key off of sherlock holmes if you have both of them you get a little bit of a bonus Patents also have an immediate bonus you take at the bottom. The buzz track moves you up four spaces over there on that track, as well as you lose two points. You must do everything on the bottom. Whereas these will provide you bonuses in phase four, as well as potentially a one-time bonus. For instance, this paper boy gives you the pocket watch, which is a stupidly good power, because it can give you just three income during that, or it can give you two points immediately. It's really good regardless, so choose wisely what you want to do with it. Let's go through the different area of the actions first, and then we'll go over this board, and then we'll wrap up. So first of all, patent office. If you ever place with one of the assistant symbols above it, you get to take an assistant action, which would be either moving up your own personal goal down here on your player board, which are these phases here. So ours is, I have an income of five, seven, and nine, and then take the actions to move up there, worth points at the end of the game. Gold points typically mean you take them now, silver is at the end of the game. I know, seems backwards, I agree. If there's ever a cost associated with it, you gotta pay that to put your dice there, either on the placement or on the action spot. So, this is how you gain newspapers, by the way, which we talked about, which are for different actions on your player board. But, patent office, take a patent. British Museum, take one of these tokens. Now, these are really neat because on your board down here, you'll notice there's some negative points. These will cover those slots and they will give you bonuses during the income phase, phase six. So, now we went from losing two points in that slot to gaining $2 every time during the income phase. Over here, you've got the Bank of England. These are shares, they call them, but essentially it raises your income and gives you victory points. Always does both, just difference on variety. Four shares, or four income and one victory point. Over here on this track, you'll notice we are at four share, or excuse me, four income currently. During the phase which you gain income, you'll gain whatever you're at and then you will drop three spaces, a la um, Grand Austria Hotel. So, if you're ever down here and you drop into the red, you get negative points. Don't want to do that. So, you want to keep your income up, even though it will drop every round. Number four, Westminster. This is a track with instant bonuses, but also it adjusts how much you have to pay your characters. So, this person, uh, Robert Chambers, is he an art author or something? Right? Didn't he write some? I don't know. Pretty sure. But point being, if you're in the green, it's a dollar, pound, pardon me. I hate it when it does a negative sign here, because to me that's a discount, but whatever. It's uh, you pay a pound in the green and a pound in the brown, but once you get out to the yellow and the blue and the black, it becomes free. Not everyone's like that. Some people are reverse of that. Some people become more expensive. Seems a little random at those, but you also get the instant bonuses you hit. Down here, take one of the characters at the Reform Club, London Times. This is also the round tracker. The game's played over five rounds. But also, if you take these actions, you get to go up the buzz track based on which year it is, all out round and then whatever it is so this one would be for however many shares you have move up the track that many times and that track over here is this buzz track which we talked about which essentially as you pass flyers you get the instant bonus as you pass posters you get to stake your buzz token on one of these and collect it during the income phase so the lower it is the lower the bonus is the higher you go the higher it is person who's highest on that track at the end of the game wins six points and then also we're going to keep on here port of london and waterloo station are just multi-action spaces essentially there's several different things you can get here the main way to get the main resources of the game besides using your uh, money or newspaper so over here take two assistant actions that could be either moving up this or placing for free on the black market track now while we're here let's talk black market for just a moment black market track is a sort of it's not really majorities based it's more just the higher you are on it gets you better benefits plus the person who's highest at the end of the game gets three points then two then one but also the higher you go you have potential to get some cogs right here during income you'll also take the bonus associated with where your assistants are now when you place one you place it in the first empty slot from bottom to top so we have three placed out here we're going to get all of those benefits at the end of the round everybody rotates down so these would drop one essentially you got to keep them in the black market if this ever completely fills up the police come in bust everybody all the assistants go back home 
That's essentially what that does. The spaces, though, indicate how much you have to pay to go there. If you use that action, the first one is, in fact, free. So then you get two cogs, gain your extra dice. The other way to do that would be by paying the newspaper action right there. Four newspapers for a dice, three to raise your income, two to get a cog, one for one dollar. And then you can always trade cash for those things right there. Then you have a ticket. Essentially, you're getting rid of one of your assistants to send them on a trip. So if you're doing it in the first year, you get nine points, the trip is gone, and that's what happens. It gets less each time. Just points. Over here, very similar. You have two light bulbs, light bulb and a take one of your green actions for income, light bulb and two on the buzz track. Now, the thing about these red spaces, they can only be taken by one person per turn. So if I go here and I'm the first one to place and I place here, no one else can take that one. That's just how that works. And that's it. You do those phases, do the black market, shift everybody down, play all five times. At the end of the game, you're going to count points. The only other tricky thing you do is that at the end, you convert all of your money into $10 notes. You can pay loans. If you ever need to take a uh, money that you don't have, you have to take a loan. Unpaid, they're worth a random amount of negative points. Paid, they're worth negative five. So still negative, but it's better than nothing. And then at the end of the game, you'll convert every $10 to put on one of these spaces down here on your player board and cover up those negative points. That is how you play Crystal Palace. So that's Crystal Palace. So let's start with presentation. Obviously these cards look amazing. The art on the cards is great front and back. The art on the characters is fantastic. I love that sort of thing. It just looks good and it works. Uh, as far as what they do, the icon iconography in this game is actually really good too. It's just enjoyable to look at. It's a pleasing game to look down at and see uh, the art and stuff like that. Now, where I do my only gripe on art direction, and I get it because it has to do with player counts, is I really wish I would rather have a board instead of eight different locations to, 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 to spread out all over the table. That's the one gripe I have is I'd rather have just a single board instead of all those locations. Now, I get it because there's fronts backs to all the tiles and two versions. That'd be almost impossible, but just a preference for me. I, I much prefer having one board on a table versus several boards on a table. It just helps keep things neater in my opinion, but again, that's a gripe about the style of how they do it, but again, it has to do with player count. So, how does the game play? Well, I really enjoy the dice placement aspects of you pick a spot to hopefully take the action and then take the action. I really like the fact that you're bidding essentially how much money you're gonna spend that turn by what dice numbers you put out there. And the higher the dice numbers, technically the more beneficial they always are. They go first and they typically get benefits. I like the way the patents combo with the people. I like the way that the um, patents by themselves give you different points based on when you build them. My one gameplay gripe that I have, and again, it's like this in most everything that involves bonuses based on it, it's really, arbitrary and hard to get out the bonuses sometimes that are needed based on the patents and the characters because so few characters and so few patents actually come out in a game that you you rarely you get it once or twice a game really more so than several times a game which I guess that's not the main thing you should be going for for points. Uh, I do like how brutal it is. It's it's a little bit brutal when it comes to, man, I'm doing really great. Oh, no, I forgot I can't pay my salary, so i got to take a loan, and that loan's worth negative 10 points. Well, I'm never going to get the points to pay that back. So to me, that's fun. I like the spatial element of your own player board covering those negatives as well. So all in all, this is a really great game. I really enjoy the way it plays. I enjoy the way it looks. I love dice placement. And I especially love the idea of bidding your money each turn. It really captures the feel of, okay, I want people to know about our inventions. I want to know about my industry that has these great people working for me. To me, it really captures that and does a great job. So that is Crystal Palace. Get your hands on it from Capstone Games. They had several of these at Gen Con. Uh, really, really good game. Um, especially at two players, it's not that slow. Uh, it plays pretty fast. Even It plays fast at higher player counts too, but obviously chatter can uh, slow that down a little bit. But, but this is a really good game. I enjoy the heck out of it. I uh, enjoy what it looks like, how it plays. I enjoy dice placement. I enjoy the aspects of dice placement that make this one unique. So that is Crystal Palace from Capstone Games. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower. Brian, see you soon.